Okay, I um, whipped up a system that allows us to execute arbitrary code from timelines. It's basically the same thing as having timeline events. Here I've got a timeline, and in this timeline um, I've just got a bunch of timeline events, uh, timeline event tracks. On these you can add timeline event clips. On event clips you can execute arbitrary methods. So for example, these will get, get executed against the robot, which is the yellow thing here. You can say what you want to happen when a clip starts, which is in this case um, the reset score method. Here I want to add to the score, I'm going to add 20 points. Here I'm going to add 8 or take away 10, so you can uh, pass in methods. Um, here I'm telling the robot I'm setting various states on it. This is a method that accepts an enum type, so sleep and go to work, go home. Not done any special code to make that work other than if we take a look at our robot here. Um, so look at the set state method, you can just see it takes an, an enum type and from that it's, it's able to infer what type it should display here same goes for the UI manager um, that has a method called change UI so we take a look at UI manager you can see this change UI method here takes a UI type which is an enum and here it correctly infers what the values are you can execute these things in edit mode so you see here as I'm scrubbing through um, these um, event clips here are invoking a, a call to change UI with different enum values which are changing UI. You can see my values getting added there, 25, 30. And that's going up that counter. It's going from the ints and I'm changing a couple of things. So, <clears throat> um, If I do it at playtime, you can see I'm actually setting the state on the robot which causes him to go to work or not, or to go home, which uh, I'll explain what it's doing in a second. Let's just fire it up and see what happens. So at the moment, the robot's been told to sleep. Then it's going to say go to work, which invokes a set state with a value of go to work. Then it's going to do go home, which is an event which says set state and go home. Now, if we take a look at the code that's doing this, we'll take a look at our robot, robot set state. You can see what I've got in here. The code just executes the switch statement. Uh, and there I'm just telling my I've got a custom NAF mesh follower class, everyone in the world's got something similar and um, I'm just telling it what to do but I use this system here, I've been meaning to unplug this and make it public for ages because the guy who gave me the first idea and got me started with the code um, whose name I don't remember now but I will mention in the GitHub um, I, I've had this for months now, uh, I just haven't, haven't had a chance to use it, I've used it extensively on a game I'm about to release and I definitely won't go back to uh, manually writing code. I, I end up refactoring a great deal of my project to really take advantage of this because it gives you a lot of flexibility being able to really choreograph to, choreograph, uh, choreograph to a high level of fidelity and hand off a lot of things to designers. Uh, you know, you just have to say to the designer, hey, execute this animation and could you please call this method when you finish? And this is the method that unregisters this particular enemy from the pool. And I can have that done at the exact right time when they disappear and all kinds of things like this. So there's a lot of use to it. I use it for narrating as well. Um, I, I make extensive use of enums in my code. So I love being able to do enum and string invocations um, in, in, all choreographed with what's happening in a timeline. So that's going to go up on GitHub shortly and I'll stick it up on the asset store as well. So I hope you guys enjoy.